Hi, my name is Fred Schott, and this is my talk, Astro, React Without JavaScript. Now, this is a talk about language. And I don't mean JavaScript versus PHP versus C++ versus Fortran. What I mean is the language of the mind. <laughs> and really, the language of how we talk about web development and how we think about web development and how that influences what we can build as web developers. You know, what's seen as easy versus what's seen as hard. What's straightforward versus what's very difficult. What's possible and what's impossible all comes from the language that we speak about web development. And to give you an example of what, I talk about, what I'm talking about, I wanna show a conference talk that I really love. Um, this is probably my favorite talk of the last 20 years, besides obviously the infamous what talk, which if you haven't seen it is a delight. Definitely recommend you giving that a quick Google when the conference is over. But what I wanna talk about is this talk. This is Pete Hunt, one of the creators of React, talking about React and really launching React. Now, what you need to know about this talk is that it's taking place in 2013 and this is essentially everyone's first time seeing React. And so the ideas that are being pitched here, you know, as in 2020, these are ideas of components and um, render cycles and how we think about front end development. It all sounds like exactly what we have come to understand as good best practices. Um, but to this audience, these concepts are very foreign. This is not an audience that speaks in components and JSX. This is an audience that is traditionally only ever thought in terms of MVC. That's model view controller. If you were lucky enough to have missed this part of web development, I will spare you the details. You didn't miss much of anything. Um, but MVC was this idea of separating your code and separating your concerns in such a way as to bring some clarity and cleanliness to your code base. Separating your concerns was the goal here. And so when Facebook launched components, you know, it was essentially this idea of, you know, MVC isn't the answer. You're separating these things, but you've coupled yourselves in all these different ways. Components is a much better idea. That was the React pitch. Um, and that was met with what I would generally call snark. Um, snark, I think, is the technical definition for what that reception was like. Because, you know, I think this tweet can probably say it better than I could. The general thinking was that Facebook was throwing away established best practices. And, you know, who are they to do that, right? MVC is the best it will ever be. Who does Facebook think they are challenging the status quo? And... To be fair, I'm adding a lot of emphasis that isn't really there in this tweet. As far as Twitter feedback goes, this is pretty polite and straightforward. But the general response was, you know, this isn't how we think about web development. What are you talking about? And so what Pete does in this talk, which is like kind of their second chance to present React to the world, is he starts to reframe it a bit. It starts to say, no, 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 React is it's just like MVC. It's the view of MVC. Well, sometimes it's the controller and sometimes it's the model and it's really just the view. And I even remember myself thinking like, oh, it's the view. It's a view. Okay, cool. I, I get it. Even though to say it's all three is exactly what he's saying. The model makes no sense. Um, but even, you know, it, it works with your stack. It works with Backbone and the developers in the audience go, yeah, Backbone a technology that we'll keep using forever. So this is very much a talk of its time. It is someone thinking about web development the way we think about it today, almost traveling back in time to 2013 to try to explain this using a language and an architecture that we today see as you know, outdated. And so this talk today that I'm gonna give, I wanna do something similar. I wanna, and you know, I'll say we've seen some great talks from other web frameworks today, all amazing projects, Next.js, Gatsby, Remix, Blitz, Redwood. You know, this has been a conference full of different ways to build your site. All great projects, fantastic stuff. But we're wrapping up the conference. We're kind of at the end. And so I want to throw you all a curveball. I want to 
challenge everyone a bit. Um, I want to present a way to build websites that actually challenges the way that we think about websites. I want to actually challenge the language that we use to describe what is a website today in 2020. And I'm no Pete Hunt. This is not React. I have a, a little bit more hubris or uh, humility to, than to say that. But this is going to challenge. This is this is a new way of thinking about websites, and we're really excited about what it unlocks. So. I'm going to borrow a bit from Pete Hunt, give it five minutes. I think you're going to like what, we're, what we've been working on. This talk is a presentation on Astro, which is a way to build faster websites with less client-side JavaScript. And everyone says they're fast. Everyone says they're performant, all buzzwords. If you're looking for something a bit more clickbaity, um, Astro is server-side, sorry, server-rendered React components but better. Ah, got your attention now. Aha. And you might be saying, what are you talking about? The React team has been working on server rendered React components for years. It's incredibly difficult. Suspense, concurrent mode, all of these things are coming together, but it's a huge lift. Um, what are you talking about that you've figured this out? And this is exactly what I'm getting at about language. In some ways of thinking, it's very difficult. With Astro, it's very easy. So before we get into the demo, I want to just you know, throw a quick little snippet at you. Astro is all about building your site with Astro files. It's essentially a super set of HTML. So you can see here, basic HTML. Uh, this is valid Astro as well. A lot like how JSX is to JavaScript, um, Astro is to HTML. But this is the foundation of every site. So you can see this kind of pages index.astro. That's essentially your index um, homepage of your website that you're building. It's basic HTML as its base. And if you know HTML, or even if you know JSX, then you already know Astro. And to build Astro's homepage, astro.build, I essentially threw together some static pages, HTML, threw an SVG on there, and measured it. And got a site so fast, <laughs> so fast it was unmeasurable on Lighthouse. So all these frameworks with their perfect score hundreds and all green, that's not cool anymore. What I found that's really cool, zeros. Be so fast that you can't be measured. That's the new goal. Gauntlet thrown down. But that's what I want to get at here a bit, is this idea of HTML and really the idea of how Astro compares to other frameworks that are, exist today. And the way I would frame it is JavaScript applications versus HTML websites. Um, JavaScript applications are what you're building with most of the frameworks that exist today. That's Next.js, um, Gatsby, Blitz, Redwood, all of those. They're all about building your site as a JavaScript application. And there's a lot of good reasons to do this. JavaScript applications are powerful, right? They're super expressive. You can do data loading, you can do data fetching, um, you can do routing, and all of these different ways to build a site in a really nice language for power and control. But they're complex. Next.js and all of these frameworks essentially exist to give you different hooks to make your site faster than the traditional, you know, here's an entire application to the user, which is the traditional SBA model. So you can build a JavaScript application and send it to the user. You could use something like Next, which will actually render it on the server. It's all about optimizing that story because performance can be such a challenge. When you've built one big application, and now you want to ship it to the user on maybe a lower powered device or a shakier internet connection, um, that can be really challenging to get right, which is why SSR, SSG, all these different optimizations are really important in the world of JavaScript applications. And you might say that all, you know, that's, that's if you think the distinction doesn't really make sense, that's, that's almost what I'm getting at here is that we are so synonymous uh, today with JavaScript applications and websites being the same thing. And there's good reason for that. You know, if you think about what an HTML website is, it's probably something a lot more lower powered, um, an 11D or a Hugo. It's really content focused, markdown, static generation of HTML um, is a pretty low powered um, idea, or at least it traditionally has been. What they end up having to do is say, yeah, JavaScript is this kind of other thing that we don't touch. So we're HTML. You want to add React? Go do it yourself. 
Um, so Snowpack's um, website, one of the projects I work on, we built that with 11D. And it's great, it's quick, but the second you need interactivity, you're off kind of setting up your own thing, which we have a Snowpack plugin for. It's great, it brings a modern dev flow to a static HTML site. But you definitely feel the sense that you've kind of thrown two tools together. It's not the seamless dev environment that a Next.js would give you. But that idea of making it difficult to add JavaScript is kind of the like gift and the curse of something like 11D. When we launched the Snowpack doc site, the new uh, rebuild back in December, um, I got something that made my whole month. A message from Alex Russell saying I did a good job with performance. Now, if you know Alex Russell on Twitter, this is unheard of. This is a shooting star on the you know 4th of May. I, I don't even know what that means. This was big and got me very happy. Of course, as I'm putting this talk together, I see that well, she didn't say it was that good. He said pretty fast, but you know what? For Alex, I'll take it. That's a, that's a pretty high praise. And what was interesting is he went on to say, you know, like, how did you do this? Like, what was, you know, obviously performance. It's so good to see people treating performance so seriously. And we were kind of shocked because we hadn't really cared about performance. Not that we were, you know, being disrespectful to our users, but just, you know, we built a site and shipped it and it was fast. It was this really kind of cut and dry story. Um, it was interesting because so much of my life has been spent being really careful of performance. And here we were building a site that was fast by default, no JavaScript payload, HTML, CSS, and a few SVGs and images. That was it. And so this experience really shaped how we saw web development as a team. And what Astro really is, is a chance to try to bring these two different ideas together. The power of JavaScript the you know, expressiveness and the kind of control that you have over what you build, but with the speed of something that's much more HTML first, no JavaScript sent to the client unless you explicitly want it to be. So the performance story of an 11D mixed with the power of an XJS, that's what Astro is today. So what does that mean? Let's jump into a demo. 